Hello folks, welcome to the channel, thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. So today, <laughs> a real double blast from the past, double bill. Something that I've not reviewed before at all. I've never had these kits, uh, either of them or even examined them uh, ever. It's the JU-88 bomber uh, from World War II, Luftwaffe bomber. And we have the frog version and the airfix version. And the thing that is particularly interesting about these, I think, is, as you'll see in a moment, but they are both manufactured and marketed for the first time in 1964. Both versions. Now, the, the, the Airfix one, which is, um, the box is very badly discoloured, so please bear with us. You'll have seen on the thumbnail what it should look like. This one's very badly discoloured, but we'll come to that in a second. But um, what is really uh, particularly interesting is that Frog, I didn't, you know, I didn't know that Frog would do such interesting items. I, I'm not an expert on Frog, I've got to be honest. Whereas I'm a matchbox, obviously, relatively speaking. Um, but the Airfix one was reboxed, so the original Airfix box it actually had the same artwork, uh, but in a slightly different style of box. It had a, a, that earlier Airfix, like a flag logo, rather than the, the round flag in the round red box, which it had later and still has today. Anyway. Where to begin? I think we should probably start with the airfix because that's probably going to be the base point. So as I say, oops, it's a bit discoloured. So don't be too put off by this. These kits do not belong to me. They've been very generously loaned to the channel by a good friend and subscriber, Mr. John Fogo. And Mr. John Fogo, of course, is the chap who lent us that lovely Lysander that we were, everybody was drooling about and got a lot of views. Um, I've lost track of the number of views now. I think it's eight or 9,000. It got a lot of you, it'd be very popular. But anyway, let's have a look at this airfix. I'll zoom you in a bit more and we'll have a proper look at it. And then we'll see what Frog's direct competitor of the same year was like. And we can actually do a sort of back to back. So obviously it's actually bombing some a British destroyer, I think, or possibly Norwegian destroyer out in the North Sea, I'm guessing, or the Channel. Um, yeah, it, I don't know exactly what's happened in terms of the way the box is discoloured. It's not discoloured all over, it's been left either in some heavy sunlight or, or something stained it. Well, we won't get into too much of that because I think it's been in John's loft for some time. Let's put that aside because that's not the best feature. Let's get into, oh, we've got a stand in here. Look at that now then, instructions. Oh, yes, 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 yes. What looks like a later, inst a later instructions, is there? Ah, there's two versions of the instructions now. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. I don't remember him actually explaining that. So we've got two different types of instructions. So we'll come to them. And then we've got a stand, you see? Airfix. Rant alert warning. Let the rant begin. Well, you know what's coming, don't you? It just proves my point. I keep moaning about stands. There's nothing new. There's nothing difficult. I bought, somebody said, uh, when I ranted about this a few weeks ago, somebody said, yeah, you can buy them. Yes, you can, and yes, I have. But I tell you that, if you buy the Airfix pack of stands, which are just like this, the quality is absolutely dire. This is better. This is way better. Can you see this? Let's zoom you right in. Get a close-up on this. The actual quality of the clarity, it's a clear part. Not sure about the wisdom of that, really, but... <laughs> But it is a clear part, and you see the Airfix logo, beautifully done, the embossing, which has been uh, injection molded with like, stamping. That's really nice, actually. Get the focus to work. That's actually a really good one. Well, I'm sorry, but you're going to be very disappointed if you go out and buy a packet of Airfix ones, because they were much less high-quality plastic. It was very um, misty, musty-looking plastic. And this is, this is a new, uh, from the new, new you know, re issue from about I don't know, three or four years ago I guess but it's not nice that's much nicer so there you go why can't we have a stand come on airfix stop it now ridiculous right so let's have a let's get these parts out very carefully uh, they're in a pale blue which is interesting because they've kind of gone back to that haven't they with the Indian production I think quite a few parts are off the sprue up a little bit carefully We've got, we've got some parts in a bag. I think well, there needs to be more parts in a bag. That's quite wise. I think that's probably John that's done that. Let's just pull that out. And we've got the Airfix Modelers Club, which they still do today, of course. And then we've got our empty box. Right, so where to begin? I think I'm going to have to organise myself a bit better than I am. Otherwise, you're going to have all sorts of problems with focus and uh, clarity. So let's move those over there. 
get a bit more organised. Is that part? Or is that just a piece of clear? Actually, the, um, considering this is 1964, my initial early impression is not that bad at all. Went through phases there, fix where they were not too bad and then went right off a cliff and then sort of became better again in recent years. Right, I'm going to move that out of the way, the frog, and we'll come to that because I have no idea of the contents of that. No idea of their concept or anything. So let's have a look at what we do have. So, for reasons I'm not entirely sure about, we've got two. We've got a nice bit of um, uh, of detail. Yes, it basically says the same things. I think. Just looking if there's any difference. No. Okay. So those that you don't know, let's go with a nice big one here. J88 was first conceived in 1935 and the prototype first flew in December 36. The whole of design and construction was completed in just under a year. It's not bad, is it? So in production when the war ended in 45, the J88 was the mainstay of the Luftwaffe and achieved the distinction of being one of the most adapted and modified aircraft in the whole world. Designed as a high-speed bomber, it was decided in 1939 to use the J88 for dive bombing and dive brakes are fitted beneath the wings of the first A model. Early A models of it took part in the Battle of Britain. Although generally successful, certain improvements were seen to be necessary and these are incorporated in the A4. Operation in 1941, the JU-88 A4 features a wing, sorry, a six foot wing increase in wingspan. Yeah, yeah I know you can get some that look quite short with as the early ones, obviously. And the greatly increased armament, they also had more powerful engines. The bomber production continued with the A series and later the S series much altered and considerably faster. And eventually the 188 and 388 series came into service. At the same time the bomber's development was being carried out, fighter versions were introduced. The C series, which was a directly comparable with the A series of bombers, so obviously it didn't have the bigger wings because they wanted it to be a bit more nimble perhaps. By the end of the war, 15,000 of the JU-88s had been produced and 9,000 of them had been bombed. During its long career, it was used as a bomber, day fighter, night fighter, reconnaissance, torpedo bomber, ground attack trainer, and even as a pilotless missile. Uh, well, of course, that was the uh, the Mistel, the first one, wasn't it? The Ju-88 was employed on every German front and served in the armed forces, also of Finland and Italy. Uh, it was powered by two Junkers Umo 211 engines with 1,200 horsepower each and a maximum speed of about 290 miles an hour and a maximum range of 1,553 miles. Defensive armament typically would be one 13mm and one 7.9mm machine gun firing forward and two 79 firing rearward from the cockpit and one 7.9 or 13mm in the ventral gondola underneath. Bombs were carried externally up to a maximum of £6,600. Hmm. Well, again, you know, we talk about instructions and people say, oh, you always moan about the instructions. Well, yes, this is 1964, literally. That is fantastic. Everything you want to know. Good potted history tells you the performance of the aircraft. Why can't the other manufacturers today do this? Sorry, but it isn't good enough. They don't actually give a date on here, but I can take 64 you can tell by the style. <laughs> it's in very good condition though, so um, although we've got a little bit of a struggle with the box quality, this is nice, isn't it? So let's have a zoom in and have a look at this one. So this is going to be like an exploded diagram style where they try and I think do quite a lot of explanation in one image, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Certainly better than some of the uh, instructions I've seen recently. <laughs> but here you go, so it's like an exploded view. Back a bit. Exploded view, and you've got quite a lot of stuff going on there. Um, mainly around the, the initial assembly of the fuselage, the cockpit, tailplane, rudder. Got separate rudder and separate ailerons. It's not a bad kit, is it? Got all the guns as well, the way they've managed to depict them very well. They've got seats. This is quite a this is quite a good uh, concept. And then it, it gives you full written English instructions. Now I, I, I realise that's a challenge for the Chinese, for example. But you know, no writing at all is not acceptable. I mean, this is taking it to a full description as well as. A visual depiction, so I quite like that. And then we've got the the, the latter half of the uh, of the construction here. All your wings, all your ailerons. It's got a lot of features: ailerons, working ailerons, working elevators, working props. It's quite impressive, to be honest. Uh, dive brakes, 
And then, oh, there's a bit more at the back. Here we go, there's a bit more, a bit smaller this time. And this time it's all the ancillary items like the props and the, the front of the engines, bombs. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I quite like that. As a visual representation, that looks as cr clear as crystal to me, what they're trying to say, what you're supposed to do. And if you're in any doubt, it's all written in detail at the side of the proper write-up. And then there's a suggested colour scheme here. With all your colour call-outs on it. I, I like that style. I do. I think. Listen, there's a few manufacturers out there today uh, that would probably benefit from adopting something similar. Because it's certainly better than a lot of stuff we've seen, isn't it? So that's... I give that a, an 8, 9 out of 10 straight away. Now this is the latest style of instructions for the same kit. So this is a typical 70s stroke 80s style. And in this, they go to the more modern way of doing it, like Matchbox if you like, of uh, having it broken down in sections. Um, which can be easier, I suppose. It's, perhaps it's not. Perhaps if, for a youngster, it's a little bit easy to follow because it's one step at a time. One, then two. Doing your fuselage, having built up all your gondola and your cockpit initially. Then you've got this wing and undercarriage section coming in. Um, but you're putting the wings on much earlier in this one. Uh, doing it slightly differently. You're putting the tailplanes on much later, as you can see. So that's quite. It's quite different, isn't it? So they're not the same, uh, even the sequencing's different. Then you've got your bombs and all your spinners and props going on at the end. Uh, but then we get a bit of a bigger call-out sheet, a bit bigger, which is not a bad thing, because the one was a bit small, wasn't it? Um, so there we go. So um, I don't think it gives a, a date on here, but I'm pretty sure that this will be the 70... I think it was 7... 6, 1... 176, is that 76? Don't know. I would have said that was early 70s, probably 72, 73. That's very much the style that they were then. Anyway, quite like both ways. Both gives you the details about the uh, aircraft. Here's some decals. So have a look at these. Yeah, they're, they're a bit worse for wear. They look a bit matchbox-like, don't they? Uh, in that they are not, not doing so good. Um, very yellowed and there's a lot of carrier film which is not so ideal. If you cut them out, I think you'd be okay, really. But maybe just get some aftermarket if you were going to construct the kit. Uh, then we've got the Are You in the FX Models Club, which was um, very popular in the 70s. Now let's have a look at this kit then and see what we make of it. Let us see what we have. Now then, first of all, all the blue parts out. Looks as though mm, 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 way around. we've got. Oh, that's a horrible step. I don't. Oh, I don't, oh, oh, oh no. And there are problems already. Look at the step there. That's not very nice. This is the top and bottom wing on the starboard wing. Let's have a look at this. This is uh, very much an airfix of the 60s, 70s here. Look at this. That's a bit of a nasty step, isn't it? You're going to refill it, look at the gap. Oh. Now you can understand, uh, those of you that are perhaps a bit younger and haven't seen these before, if we look at that now carefully, it's not too bad, you know, it's fixable of course, but it's not Matchbox, is it? That's nowhere near the sort of fit and finish that you get with a Matchbox kit. I can't think of a Matchbox kit that I ever had or seen that's got examples like that with a great big step and a gap appearing. But, you know, so this is what I'm saying, and again, there's a bit of flash, um, I'm not trying to be too critical here, I'm just being honest. You know, there's flash on it, um, look at the, look at the uh, extremities of this wing underneath, well, it's both sides actually. If you look at the tip, you can see there's some flash there, there's some little bit of flash here, there, see it? Yeah, yeah. again, it's not a deal breaker, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you can't build the kit, it's not a problem um, with skills, but... But it's not Matchbox, and this is why the Matchbox that I rave on about, this is why they were so popular, because, you know, you look at John Fogo's Matchbox kits, he sent like the Indianapolis and the two Lysanders, there's no flash on any of it, yeah. Um, and this is this is why the Matchbox realised there was a gap in the market. I mean, talking of gaps, 
same piece we're talking about. He's got a lot of faults. Look at this, the actual wing root, which are not flush and in either dimension. Ignore the gap at the front. I'm looking at this bit here. There's a horrible gap there you're going to have to take care of. And then this is not flush or level. So we've got a bit of an issue there as well. Uh, anyway, there we go. So let's just put them to you. Let's see if the other side's the same. Whoops. I suspect it'll probably be identical to be honest. The reverse mould. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a nasty fit, I've got to be honest. Uh, I'm not loving this already. <laughs> it's just, and there's no locating pins either, apart from, oh, there are, there's two at the base and one at the tip of the wing, but in the meantime, nothing. And it just floats around on a, a bit of a sea of flash. Can you see the flash here in the apex at the corner there? Very flashy. Okay, so let's put that over there. Let's have a look at the fuselage now, just zoom me back a bit. Let's have a look at the fuselage, because so far we're not very impressed. Um, although it's nice that you get ailerons, that's good. And again, it's more of the same, really. We've got quite a flashy area around the cop. Bits of flash are actually dropping off. Wow. Um, hmm. Yes, it's a bit, bit rudimentary, you know. It's not a nice, not a nice fit. Yeah, you can make it work, of course you can, but um, you've got quite a nasty ridge, nasty seam. Everything is work, and this is what this is what they were like. You know, this is why I historically have not been a huge fan of Airfix uh, until the last ten years, when they've got quite good now. Let's be fair. Um, in the market, they're very competitive price, and they're very competitively. They've got the compromise better, I think, towards more towards quality than just trying to be the cheapest thing on the market. But in the sixties and seventies. Quality, airfix, these are not words that go together very well. <laughs> I'm sure people are going to be screaming at the TV saying, he hates airfix, stop it. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of the parts. Again, you're going to see Flash City here, I think. Let's just, uh... Let's just move those others out. Wait for me. There we go. So. Mm. Again, quite a lot of Flash. Um, but the moulding's good, you know, the detail is good. You've got a nice bit of detailed exhaust, detailing the engine's inlet. Again, very flashy props, blades. Hmm. Mm, that's that one. Now we have... There's quite a few parts like that about to depart from this spring, I've got to be honest. I think John's bag, when it, I send them back to him, I might be getting a bit, bit bigger in terms of items that I lose. Now you can see here that the, uh, the little men, the uh, crew, can you see? There we go, they are, yes, they are not the finest I've ever seen either. Uh, yes. Can you see that? Yeah. It's quite a hard colour to see this pale blue, it's a bit like a white. Um, you got your seats, the crew have got like a hole in them, a horrible sink mark with a ejector pin mark right in the middle of his chest, which isn't ideal, it would be better on his back, wouldn't it? They didn't really think that through very well. Hmm. Um, then we have got a little sprue, another little sprue with all the little um, sway braces for the bombs, to hold the bombs on here, and the props, and again, look at the, <laughs> look at the spinners, sorry, not the props, again. A good deal of good helping of flash there, isn't there? Look at the flash there. Ah! Yeah, every every part is going to need to be cleaned up. Um, not every single one, but I think most of them are. Uh, these elevators are nice, though. They've done that quite well. They're just a bit lazy with the quality of the the mould. I think Airfix in this era. They were just a bit. I don't know. They're just not not being that careful about how they went about it. Here's your bombs which ironically are not flashy at all, so there's a lot of inconsistency here. They look nice, actually. As do the little... Well, I was going to say as do the pans, but we've got, again, we've got some nasty flash creeping in at the bottom there. Can you see that? Flashy. As I said previously about Airfix of this era, the last time I saw that much flash, Dale Arden was uh, arm in arm with him and he was being assisted by Dr. Hans Zarkov because it was Flash Gordon. <laughs> anyway, we've got one more here. Oh, okay, this has got, well, this has got the gear legs. Oh, so delicate. My God, I know this is going to drop off. It just feels like it's going to go any second. Look at it. Holy 
it still, boy. Hold it still, boy. Oh, hang in there. Well, again, those elevators, the, the tailplanes are really nicely moulded. And the legs are. So it's, it's all over the place. To be honest, this sprue isn't that bad. A little bit of flash on these guns here. Can you see that? Flashy there. The rest of it's okay, really. So it's a bit hit and miss, isn't it? It's not consistent throughout. How about Mr. Fogo's little bag? And he's got all the uh, clear parts and things in it. It'd be very wise to do this, I think. I think there might be any two kind of extras going in there. Now we've got clear parts. We have got the front clear part. Zoom you in for that. Uh huh. Yeah. That's quite quite nice actually. It's quite thick. Quite a thick thing. Hmm. Then we have got the sort of uh, the, the rear of the cockpit and the sort of gondola underneath, clear parts. Yeah. And that's the other that's the other side, which has obviously come off the sprue, this one. But again a bit thick, not not terribly scale like I'd say for 70 cent scale. Uh, a little bit challenging perhaps. Yeah. It's not too bad. And we have a bomb. Okay. And then we just got the uh, gear dogs basically. Couple of gear doors. Right. There we are. So, quite a few items that have got to go back in the bag. I seem to have got a vehicle outside making a lot of noise, sorry about that. And then, whoops, I think we should look at the frog. Um, I have to say, what's my opinion of this? Mm -hmm. I'm not terribly impressed, um, even factoring in the date, 1964 moulding, you know, it's a long time ago, what's that? That's nearly 60 years, isn't it? So, yeah, 58 years ago, wow. Can't say I'm impressed. I think that it's... Um, I like some things about it. I like the fact they've bothered to put ailerons on and elevators, which I don't think a lot of kits had at all. Matchbox tended not to have that. And 70 second scale bomber, you know, it just didn't. So that's very good. So again, it gets an extra point for that, but it does lose a bit for the flash, which is fairly nasty. And some of the fit and finish, the actual... Uh, the experience I think you're going to have of building it, you're going to be doing a lot of work. It's not not nice, to be honest. So, it's got a stand though, so it gets an extra point for the stand. I think 8 out of 10, a bit generous maybe, but I think 8 out of 10. I don't want to be too harsh, because it's, it's not it's not all bad. There's some good news in here. Just, just some very good news and some very bad news at the same time. A bit mixture, you know. Is that fair? I think that's fair. Let's just pop these in. Oh, sorry, there is one we forgot to look at. Ah, I missed. And I heard the vehicle outside it and just distracted me. It's the one that's got the dive brakes and the undercarriage gear in it. Wing dive brakes, and then you've got uh, the tyres, wheels and tyres there, and then you, the underneath of the... Uh, is that the gondola? It's only one of them, that's the underneath of the gondola. Oops, sorry. The underside of the gondola at the front. So there we go, we have it. Um, it's got a nice stand in it, so as I say, it's not all bad. Uh, I think 8 out of 10 is kind of... Yeah, I'm sure there's guys watching this that are going to say, I built that, it was okay, you know. And that's fair comment, that's fair comment. If I can just put that there, I don't have to scratch anything. Let us zoom out so that you can see what that's going on. So, now then, something different in the extreme frog 
and this is FROG F160. FROG, for those of you who don't know, stands for Flies Right Off The Ground. And it was a very popular uh, kit manufacturer of the 60s and 70s. Now then, we will see about how they've done things here. Instructions, it's more of the exploded view style again, I can see. Blue plastic again. Oh, we get a stand here too. Ooh. Quite a fancy stand. Must, uh, oh yes. Again, I, I don't like this this thing. They're all copying each other, won't we? They're copying each other with a clear stand. And even Matchbox did it, of course. But this is not a very room. It's got a lot of scratches on it, and I think that's partly of it. But, well, hey, hey, hey. You'll never guess. Look at look at what it says on here. Now, um, talked about this when we talked about the Matchbox history, Matchbox 50 years of Matchbox. And I said about all the British toy companies that went out of business at the same time. And here's one of them. So this was obviously um, Triang. Now, Triang were known for toys and trains. Uh, and I think part of the business got ultimately purchased by, by Hornby, the train side of the business. And the other half that did all the little kiddies' toys went bust. In fact, there was... Um, a famous documentary in the 1980s that when they were in financial trouble already, right at the start of the 80s, and the famous industrialist Sir John Harvey Jones, who was a bit of a hero of mine because I thought he was a very clever chap, and he'd been the chairman of ICI, and uh, he left ICI and sort of retired, and then the BBC brought him back for this documentary series where he would go and... Um, <laughs> He was a bit of an accountant time, he was very brutal with some of these companies, but he went to Morgan Sports Cars, he went to Triang, and he went to all sorts of people. And it was a very interesting series where he was trying to tell them how to make money and get out of the doldrums and re turn the business around to make a profit. And Triang, he said, the problem that they had, I think he said then they were a bit too diverse, uh, and he said you, you should, um, you know, I think he actually recommended that they sell off the train, model train side, which of course they did. But the, uh, I think they, they bet the house on the you know, the kiddies, pedal cars, and all that kind of thing for toddlers. And it didn't work out, didn't work out. They were expensive, and making it in Manchester, I think it was. Manchester or Nottingham? I can't remember. I think it was Manchester. Um, but they were making it in Manchester, and, you know, it was very expensive for where they were, um, and there was a recession, and everything went wrong for them. But I'm just making the point and mentioning this, because, A, they obviously had an interest as Rovex. Uh, that's where the connection comes in, that owned Frog. And they've got the Triang name on there. Uh, and like Matchbox, they went out of business because things just went wrong and kids stopped buying the toys. Uh, and like Matchbox, it wasn't necessarily the model kits that put them out of business, it was the other part of the business. So and those of you say, well, Matchbox went bust because they put too many freebies and dioramas in and stand no. That is not the reason they went bust, it's because all the kiddies stopped buying their cars and other toys, of which you saw in my, my previous vids. Anyway, let's get these out and just see how they actually compare to what we've just seen. Um, I've got a feeling that in some respects they might be very similar. I like the artwork on the front, that's quite cool, I've got to say. Um, it's got some more on the side here where you can see the other products in the range. The Devotine D520C, which looks like an Aero Cobra meets a Spitfire, doesn't it? That's a weird thing. Is that French? I presume it is. Not that I know. Is it American? Experts, please shout out. Miles Magister. And we've got the North American B25 Mitchell, Percival Procter, and Hawker Sea Fury on the side. Interesting, isn't it? Oh, and then on the back, a bit of a dented box. On the reverse, you've kind of got your kind of colour call out style thing here. I like that. It's quite a nice presentation for 64, that I think that's decent. And this is exactly um, around about the time that they were actually filming the, uh, the Battle of Britain movie, uh, which of course became world famous and uh, didn't have any Dornies in it, though, I don't think. I think it was, oh, sorry, or Junkers, I think it was mainly. Uh, mainly featured Heinkel 111s that they got from Spain. But anyway, let's have a look what we got. So we'll start with, put the box on one side, and we'll have a look at the instructions, which I think are going to be fairly simple. Very much in the original Airfix style, though. They've got a description of what to do in English, and then they've got an exploded diagram. It comes on two sides. Um, fairly straightforward, really. Let's just bring you in, not too much. 
There's no history on it though, I don't think. Oh yes, there is. Yeah, it even says history. Hey, I take it back. Frog are winning points here that he will. <laughs> so how are they going to match up to the airfix? So it's got history look, and it's the history that we've all just heard about basically. Um, and then it tells you the items in the range, and you get gold token, free gifts. Uh, new frog box contents becomes a working tray. Look at that. So the idea is you actually build your kit within the box like a tray. That's quite a good idea. So they were not without innovation, were they? Frog? Well, you know, they had a nice stand, they got nice instructions and a bit of history, and they thought about the box making it into a useful item for kiddies to, to build the model. So it's very similar to the Airfix style, isn't it? You've got this exploded diagram type uh, view. Bring it a bit closer. Um, yeah. And it tells you to paint matte black inside. So there's some very good instruction. It's more than the clarity that you get with border model. You know, you've got the Junkers Stuker and you've got the BF109 G6. Doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell you how to paint it or where to paint it, what colours to paint. No data on the internal painting or whatsoever on those, so yeah. In that respect, it's better. And it has a decal with the look of it that goes, yes, it does. It has a decal, look at that, that goes actually on. Bring you in a bit more. It says, on the stand, see? Like a, like a badge almost. See it? There it is. That's cool. Again, very yellowed and overly, almost identical to Airfix, isn't it? <laughs> overly uh, carrier filmed. Uh, seems to be the style of the 60s, that. But there's a lot of detail there. It tells you how to paint the internal parts, helmet colour, helmet and boots. It's all there. You don't get that. Or a stand or any crew with these modern Chinese manufacturers, for example. So, whilst I am critical sometimes of the quality of some of these early kits, for obvious reasons, you've got to put it in context of when it was created and what the tooling technology was like. But they were, they were doing some things right, weren't they? Like Matchbox, like Airfix. And I think that modern manufacturers should watch these videos, maybe go and buy a couple of these old kits and have a good look at them, and realise that they are not doing that brilliant a job. Yes, they're getting the moulding beautiful. But the rest of the package, no, a lot of them are doing it quite poorly, I think. Uh, and I'm thinking of Border and uh, HKM and, uh, well, many, many of them, to be honest. Many of them. Anyway, let's have a look at these parts now. Okay. Gosh, it's very deja vu, like, look at this, back to back with the Airfix. So again, um, we've got raised panel lines, which I'm not sure about. <laughs> um, but again, that's very much the uh, style of the era. But can we see those? Now then. Look at this, can you see them? Yes, raised panel lines. Nasty, very nasty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some very horrible sprue con connections where they're on the original sprue, which I don't think it was in this box, it was probably from a master. Uh, there's a nasty ridge, focus. quite a nasty ridge all the way along. And again, there's quite a bit of flash. It's very similar to the Airfix, isn't it? Very much of a muchness. Lots of flash on the ridges here. See that? Yeah, there's a lot of flashy bits there that need to be sorted. Uh, huge amount of flash on this tail. Look at that. Look at that. Yow. This is like Flash Gordon 2. <laughs> okay. Then we've got the wings. So they've done slightly differently. We've got a separate sort of wing they sell. Um, but I have to say, it's got, again, it's got some rather nasty raised panel lines. I don't like this. No, I don't like that. Ouch. Very, very nasty. But they actually go together really rather nicely. The actual fit is good. That's a much better fit than we just saw on the Airfix kit. And then we've got these nacelles which go underneath. I've got that the wrong way around. Well, have I? That way? That way, I think, like that. No, again, the fit's not bad. The fit's not bad. That seems to be quite decent. Pop that in there. 
Um, still, again, a lot of flash. Look at the leading edge here. Very flashy along here. Lots of raised panel lines. But again, we've got nice ailerons, which, you know, Matchbox weren't doing, in fairness. So, they get a, perhaps an extra point for that. But it's just, the, it's just this flash issue, isn't it? Again, just like the Airfix. Look at the wingtip here. Oh, horrendous. But the actual precision, I think, of the moulding in terms of the fit looks a bit better than Airfix, I think. I Here we've got the uh, ailerons. Again, everything is raised, which I uh, just count against it. And again, look at the spinners, look at the flash, just almost the replay of the airfix all over again. Look at the flash there. Ouch! <laughs> so you're going to be doing a lot of cleaning up on these parts, it has to be said. We've got those na nacelles were not too bad, actually. I thought that was half decent. Let's just see if they go together. Did they? Yes, they do. Look at that. Oops, sorry. Yeah, that's not so bad. Not too bad at all. The fit seems really good. It's just the finish that's poor. I mean, look at the, look at this one. Oh, look at that flash on that. Yikes! It's hard to know where the flash begins and the actual part ends, you know. And yet the other side is fine. Very strange. Just lack of quality control. Um, yeah. So, let's have a look at the little sprues then. Um, here we've got the engine. Whoops. Here we've got the engine, uh, the front of the engine's intakes. Got some very, very dodgy looking uh, moulded pilots, which again are very, very flashy indeed. If the camera will just focus for us. Look at that. <laughs> so as I say, you're going to do need a lot of clean up. Um, but you do get crew again, which is good, and you don't get that in a lot of the Chinese kits today. We've got here the rudder and the uh, the, spit, uh, the propeller itself, I should say. And we've got some undercarriage wheels and tyres. Again, quite flashy. Not as bad as some of the ones we've seen. And in fairness, the propeller isn't very flashy. That's quite decent. Whereas on the other sprue, it's a little bit worse. That's got more flash on it, I'd say. But the bombs are nice. They, they seem to be pretty much flash-free. It's strange that some parts don't seem to attract the flash in the same way, isn't it? And there's your ailerons. Yeah, okay, and the guns, very similar to the Airfix in many, many ways. Um, it's going to be hard to choose between them, really, I think, at the end. Tough one, this. Then we've got the clear parts. Um, oh, well, actually, I've got to be honest and say that this looks nicer than the Airfix, don't you think? That looks much nicer. The framing of it is it's only one piece, which is better. I think the detail of the framing is much nicer. Yes, that's actually better than Airfix. And then we've got the clear part for the underside of the gondola. So is it a slightly different design, this one? I think it might be a, a different variant. I don't think it's the A4, is it? It doesn't say. It just says JU88. But that's the gondola, this clear piece. It's like a torpedo here. And then you've got the front, the front glass, which... Mm, Kind of similar to the Airfix, if I'm honest. It's got a bit of a flaw in it. Can we see that? It looks a bit flawed to me, but it's got the nice framework again, which is much more detailed than you saw in the Airfix kit. So there's some parts in there that are quite nice. And then we've got this rogue little tail wheel here. <laughs> That's not too bad. So, how very interesting. It's certainly something very, very different. We've got our stand here, I mentioned. Go back in there. Hmm. I have to be honest and say that I kind of like it better than the Airfix. Uh, only by a fraction. Uh, it's still very much of, of its time, isn't it? Um, hmm. Just going to go back to the Airfix and just remind myself, um, give the final pronouncement about the, what the, the fuse lines detail was like. It was um, raised panel lines as well. It's raised rivets, actually, which is kind of better. That's something we didn't really pick up on. Let's just look at that again. Going super close. Getting really close for this. Let's see if you can see the detail here. It's raised rivets. Can you see that? I'm actually too close for focus. Can you see it? It's raised rivets, which is actually better. 
that looks a bit more realistic. So these very obvious, easily done raised panel lines, which is what Frog went for. Um, how tricky, how tricky. Interesting, isn't it? I think I'm going to give it exactly the same rating. I'm going to give it 8 out of 10 for the frog as well. I think that it's like 6 and one and a half dozen of the other. Um, I think the frog fit looks far superior to the airfix. Uh, the airfix is going to be hell, quite frankly. Um, but the, the, the problem is they're both going to be hell. Uh, but you're going to do a lot more clean up on the frog. Um, they both need lots of clean up, but the frog's got the most clean up. But I think the actual fit will be better. Um, and it might actually look like the better kit at the end of the day, I have a feeling. Isn't it interesting to see something like that when you've got a head-to-head -head comparison? Sorry about the quality of that uh, box, it's just a Discord. Whereas this one's obviously been kept well away from the light and everything else. Anyway, I hope you find it interesting. I'm going to say 8 out of 10 for both of them, um, but for different, slightly different reasons. I think there's much of a muchness, both from 1964. Interesting stuff. Anyway, I hope you'll give me 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up and you'll smash that like button. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, you must ding the notification bell to get early warning as soon as I've uploaded a new video. And I hope to have some more similar stuff coming up in the not too distant future. In the meantime, please look after yourselves. Until next time, thanks a lot. Bye for now.